the presence of God, um, my brother Jesse, it's so, people take it so lightly today. When we get into the presence of God through prayer, don't we recognize, don't we know that that is a precious, holy presence? And welcome, ladies and gents, to another episode of Youth Fires. And today, once again, I am joined by a very, very special guest, uh, a woman of God who is truly on fire right now in this season. She was literally formed and fashioned for this season, this end time ministry that she's doing. And I would like you to all welcome back Double Grace Morta. Double Grace, how are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for inviting me once again. It's always great being with you. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Um, over this last year, year and a half, I've, I've been able to to watch uh, from a, a social media distance, you know, <laughs> yeah. how things have been growing with you within your ministry, uh, with your parents, uh, apostle and, and, and prophetess. And I, I just, I'm so glad when I see a, a family that is that is so driven for the purpose of God, you know, because mm -hmm. you know, we, we, I, you could say that it's very similar to to my life as well. You know, where parents are ministers and we're here, and all we do is preach the gospel. <laughs> all we do, you know, we live it, we breathe it, and it it, it is our being. You know, serving yes. serving God. But grace today, double grace today. What we are going to speak about is the power of prayer. Hallelujah. And for those of you who are watching, I would like you to understand that today is going to transform your life. It's going to transform Hallelujah. your prayer life. It's going to transform your walk with Christ because the power of prayer, the, I don't think we understand, but hopefully by the end of this episode and the end of the next episode, we'll be able to come together and understand and be like, my God. My prayer life is so important. So Double Grace, yeah. let's get into it. Now, what exactly is prayer? Now for me, it is literally a dialogue between God and man. Yes. You know, it cannot be taken for granted. If we go back into the beginning in the Garden of Eden, we saw that there was a dialogue between man and God. Then yes. we go down a little later, we see with Abraham, there was a dialogue between Abraham and God. But then yes. we as people, we as people reading this in scripture, reading this in the wood in the Old Testament, how then do we take that and then place it into our walk with Christ? How then do we take this Old Testament way, this such close communion that these men had with God, how then can I have this prayer life? What is prayer? Double Grace, what is prayer? If I say something to you and you don't respond back, wouldn't you think that's a little bit, you know, disrespectful? And they said, yes, Double Grace, we would think that's, you know, a little disrespectful. And I said, many times God is calling on us to pray, but we have excuses. You know, um, that I, I hear so many times people say, you know, when I was sleeping, when I woke, I got woken up at the middle of the night and I felt an unction to pray, but I just went back to sleep. Those are exact moments that we miss where we can have intimacy with God, where we can communicate with God. And many times I truly believe that in the hour that we are, that we are in, especially in our generation, God is knocking at the door and saying, I want to spend time, to, time with you, but it's up to you if you're going to open the door. And communication with God, prayer is an opportunity to become intimate with him. That is so, that is so, that is so powerful. It is an opportunity to come intimate with him. And then I want us to, coming off of that point, we see, because I, I get it that, Prayer is like breathing. I know there's a scripture that says prayer is like breathe. It's like a breath of air. Because when you think back again to the beginning of time, God said He breathed. He breathed in to man, yes. so that the spirit of the Lord could come inside. So when we need to understand is that intimacy that God had with us at the beginning of time, 
he desires it now but of a grace there is a issue i feel with our generation Absolutely. and wanting to get intimate with people right because yes. they kind of don't understand intimacy because we are in such a society now where where everything is open and out there we could see everything we could understand everything through social media whatever so there's now there's a lack of intimacy that mm -hmm. our god desires how can then believers in jesus christ these young people who are watching get that intimacy or desire that intimacy you know intimacy today in today's society is only the moment somebody thinks of intimacy they're automatically going to think of a relationship mm. but the greatest relationship that you can have starts with jesus christ if your relationship with jesus christ if you fell in knowing how to communicate with our father with jesus with, and, uh, and his son jesus christ then every other relationship after that will not succeed because the most relate the best the most important relationship you will ever have in life is your relationship with god and many times people first equate intimacy with other people, but they forget about God. This is why God says inside of his word that he will not be second, third, fourth, or fifth. He will only be first. And so if you equate intimacy with people, this is where you got it wrong. Because intimacy first starts with God. And we see it at the very beginning of scripture, right in Genesis, where it says that Adam walked with God and prayer is supposed to lead you into a place where you walk with God. And intimacy is where God, your, the spirit of God is with you, where you, God is in you and you're in God. Amen. And so I really want people to understand in our generation and really get that intimacy. It, it, you should, your mind shouldn't automatically go to, you know, um, relationship, relationships with people, relationship with a person, but intimacy should be automatically when you think about it, walking with God, walking with God. What does that mean? The Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree? Another version says, how can two walk together unless they walk hand to hand? And, you know, sometimes when I do, when I do my research, I like to go and you know, different versions to see and to get a better understanding. And then another version says, I believe the message Bible says, how can two walk together unless they have never made an appointment? And so prayer is an appointment with God. Many times people get in prayer and they just say, you know, they have no, and they have no expectation for God to meet them. Every single time I get in prayer, I have an expectation for God to meet me. And, you know, Every single time it's different and God shows a different side of him to me. And when God shows a different side of him to me, it makes me want to become more engaged in him and more engaged in prayer. Now, the problem is today is that when we say prayer, people think of, you know, they, they think that it's boring. They yeah. think, you know, there's no fire in prayer. When people say prayer, prayer, they think you just close your eyes and you just sit there and you say <laughs> and nothing. No, because Jesus says to his disciples, he says, when you pray, say so when you pray you can't just sit there and be like god you already know what i'm going to pray about so there's no point of praying you know prayer is an opportunity like i said before to become intimate before god to free yourself before the lord that's why the bible says in the presence of the lord there is liberty Yes. Many people today, they equate prayer with bondage. The yes. only time, especially in our generation, people will pray is when they're in bondage. But what about when you're free? And this is what true intimacy with God is. You know, when you have a close friend or when you have a best friend, whether you are that best friend, let's say you guys are having a disagreement or whatever it is. At the end of the day, you're going to say, hey, this is my friend. This is my this is my boy. This is my girl. You know, I can't, you know. I'm not going to get upset. I'm not going to get upset. And that's what people do. If they don't get an answer from God automatically, they get upset. God, you don't love me. You don't care about me. No, but the Bible says they that wait on the Lord. And we forget about that stuff. We forget about tarrying. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm taught in tarrying in prayer, praying until something happens, pushing in prayer. That's what I'm taught in. And this all has to do with intimacy. How, how bad do you want God? How, how, how great is your thirst? How great is your hunger for God? Because the presence of God, and this is where I'm going to hand it off to you, the presence of God, um, my brother Jesse, it's so, people take it so lightly today. 
when we get into the presence of God through prayer, don't we recognize, don't we know that that is a precious, holy presence? And God allows us, one day it hit me, God, you allow me, me, I'm a person that's made many mistakes. You allow me through prayer to come into your presence, to come into your precious holy presence and meet you and, and, and commune with you and fellowship with you. And so it's so amazing to me. And just like you said, I truly believe that or, you know, our generation takes prayer way too lightly. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. And, you know, just as you speak in there, you know, the Holy Spirit is just like, you know, just laying these little points on for me. And I was just thinking about once again to the Old Testament and God establishing this tabernacle and this place where yes. we had the ability, where the priests had the ability to go before the Lord. And it was such a sacred and such a holy thing. But then when we come to the New Testament, we see that the veil was torn. When Jesus died on that cross, the veil was torn. And then when I think of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then God equating us, the church, as the bride of Christ, there's that intimacy we must understand there that we must let down our God. Because the thing about it is that we go before God with so much baggage. We go before God yes. with, with all that we want to say to God. All these words that we want to put before God. All this religiosity we want to put before Him. But what He's saying is the veil has been torn. The God, you have to let your God down so that you can now yes. enter. Because God is spirit. God is spirit. We must understand that. So we must come to Him spirit to spirit. Now, if our spirit man isn't built up, right? If our flesh, if we're coming into prayer in such a flesh, fleshly way, sorry, then how then can we hear the voice of God? And then I think of the word sacrifice. Intimacy speaks of sacrifice. When you think of intimacy, it must take a level of sacrifice to want to spend time with your heavenly father. Absolutely. The Old Testament in the tabernacle, they had to sacrifice. In the New Testament, yes. Jesus was that sacrifice. Yes. So when we come to pray, it cannot be a moment where, oh, let me just come for five minutes to, to, to speak, to speak, to speak. And God is like, what are you really doing? God is like, what yeah. are you really doing? <laughs> Absolutely. It must be an occasion where we are literally understand we have to find ourselves a place on holy ground. We have to desire that holiness. And you know, just this, this last point I want to make is that I, I remember for a few, a few times when I get really like really deep in prayer, I want to tell you, it's like it's, it, 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 it becomes, it's such a super spiritual uh, experience where, you know, you, you can't oh, yeah. speak anymore. It's just God just releasing things to you. Whenever it gets so deep, I find myself literally like walking uh, into Jerusalem. I, I'm, I'm serious about this. I find myself walking into Jerusalem, into the uh, Solomon's temple. It's just like I'm walking up these stairs and who meets me at the top wow. of these stairs is Jesus. Wow. And wow. when I get, when I, when that experience happens, it's literally for me, it's like a stamp of approval of God saying, yes, I receive wow. your prayer. Wow. I receive wow. your sacrifice. Wow. This is yeah. where I want you to get to. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. double grace, I want us as a people, as a young generation to understand, as it says in Second Chronicles 7, if my people... If my people will hear my voice and obey my, my com and obey my commands, come to me, come to me. Ephesians 6 says, pray in the spirit. Mm. We want to know how to pray double grace. It says, the word says, pray in the spirit. Well, I've always been taught um, by my, both of my parents, Apostle Memorial and Prophetess Makita Morton. And, you know, just like I said before, um, uh, when you pray, say. Now, the problem with today, especially our generation, is that when we go on to what Jesus said after the Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed mm -hmm. be our name, what we do is we literally repeat that prayer. But we don't know that that's the model for prayer. Yes. 
This is why the Bible says, enter into his, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Right after you enter into the gates and into the courts where you headed to, into the house, right? And so many times people, they say, yeah, I prayed, but they're doing it. Our father, which are in heaven. And then they expect intimacy to come through that. Absolutely not. The first thing that I always do when I pray is I always give thanks to God. Yeah. Because if I wouldn't, if it wasn't for God keeping me today, if it wasn't for God waking me up this morning, if I did not thank him, I wouldn't be able to pray in that exact moment that I was praying to him. And so many times uh, uh, automatically in, in prayer, people automatically go to the hands of God instead of to the face of God. You know, one day I was studying Jacob and Esau after I had an encounter and an angel had visited me. And then when I was reading Jacob's prayer, when he said uh, his brother Esau was coming to him with 400 other men, it surprised me when I broke down his prayer. It literally went along with enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And then right after Jacob entered into his courts with praise, now he came with his request. Now, the problem with many young believers is that they think the, nat the spiritual realm is, this, is it's also same as the natural realm. Now, think about this. Are you going to go to the king and say, King, this is what I want for you. You're not going to go to the president of the United States automatically and say, president of the United States, President Joe Biden, this is what I want for you. This is what I want you to do. Absolutely not. You're going to have to go through some gates. You're going to have to go through some security. You're going to have to go through, through some checks and back everything. You're going to have to go through it all before you get to the president. Now, the problem is people don't recognize that at, that is actually that same model is actually the same. My God, in when it comes to God mm -hmm. and when we enter into his gates of thanksgiving and, and, and into his courts with praise, it allows us to then go to him with our petitions. It allows us to go to him with what we are requesting. It allows us to go to him with what we desire, because number one, now God sees that we are truly thankful for what he has done in our lives. And we are also thanking him for him. Too many people they go to God, yeah, God, this is what I want you to do. This is the time I want you to do. This is the time. And so they totally forget about what God wants to do in prayer because they're so focused on what they want to do. But when you say, God, I thank you for your will being done in my life. God, I thank you for your way being done in my life. God, I thank you that I'm totally surrendered to what you want to do inside of my life. Now it opens up the heart of God towards you. And now God says, listen, whatever I want to give to my son or daughter, I'm going to do it because they've not forsaken me they've not forgotten about me and the problem in prayer the problem that people have in prayer is that they think that god is a god that has forsaken or forgotten about them because god hasn't said anything yet mm -mm. god hears you but it's up to you if you're going to listen it's up to you if you're going to listen now for example if i go in prayer and i say god i want you to do this actually i'm going to give a, a biblical example before Jesus was going to the cross, he, you know, he pleaded with God. He said, you know, God, he said, you know, my father, do I have to do this? Do I have to go to the cross? You know what the Bible says? God said nothing because while Jesus was praying, he had this understanding. All right, father, if that, if, if this is our will, thy will be done. Now, many times when we go to prayer, we say, all right, God, you know, um, we expect the, the answer that we want, we expect to get that answer. And something that I've noticed in prayer is that God, he, he, he will, you know, go way beyond our expectations. But when we think is going to happen, mm -mm 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 -mm. because the Bible says God's ways are not our ways, neither his thoughts, our thoughts. And so if we go to prayer, many times I go to prayer, I say, Oh, this prayer is about to be fire. This prayer is about to be good. I'm about to have so many visitations. I'm about to have encounters. And nothing happens. Do I do I get upset about it? Do I get discouraged? I may get discouraged about it, but I go right back to prayer. I go right back to what I'm doing. And so to answer your question, how do we pray? Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts of praise. And then right after, go with the desires of your heart. And if I go back to Jacob, Jacob, he said, God, I thank you for this. I thank you for my wife. I thank you for my kids, my wives at this time. I thank yeah, you for my kids. Wives. I thank you. <laughs> I thank you for all this. And then he started praising God's name. And right after that, he came with this problem. He said, Father, I need your help. He was he was a blank page for God. 
you enjoyed that episode of Your Fires, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell icon to be notified of our future episodes.